I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my, <laughs> my freshly showered co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, dude? Definitely not showered. <laughs> Fuck, what do you got, a boxing match after this? What's going on, champ? Where you Josh know, is wearing a bathrobe for <laughs> anybody who's just listening. It's not a bathrobe. It's a, it's a, well, I guess it is a bathrobe. What else would it be? I thought it was like more of a. Does it say a cardo across the leg, back? I wish. <laughs> that, that'd be amazing. <laughs> fucking veal. You know, this, veal uh, parm. <laughs> this uh, this robe is baggy. <laughs> remember fucking Stallone? Huh? This robe is baggy. <laughs> the first one? No, I don't you remember don't know, that line. How does a guy from Philly not know? I don't know every line of, of Rocky. That wasn't one that, I mean, I know every line of like Reservoir Dogs and, oh. you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was like a film, tour of the film. I was like a film, I was in film You're school, film so guy. yeah, yeah. Just a fucking I, I'm watching Tulsa King, and it's so bad it's good. And it's every minute with Stallone, I'm just quoting Rocky lines. <laughs> I just want him to say to the other characters shit he says in Rocky all day. So are you watching it with your wife? Yeah. And how annoying is that to her? Or does she enjoy She's it? She's all right. Yeah, she likes it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, we get it like, <laughs> I always tell her that story about how uh, we were, you and I were in here breaking down or setting up, one of the one of the two, and, and <laughs> I was like, man, we've been together a long time, and during the, I was talking about our marriage to you, and I said, even during the pandemic, and you go, yeah, you know, I was hearing you sing in there, and I thought, man, that's God, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> you walking know, you around, ended up on the podcast, actually. Dude, you said it to me. <laughs> walking around singing, I'm like, yeah, man, that's love. <laughs> that is love. Putting up with that. Oh, God. My wife was walking around the house singing. I'd be like, come on. Dude. <laughs> what are we doing? I think it's just like whatever you're, whatever you're irritated with, as long as it doesn't, as long as they don't, it's not something that bothers you. Right. Because you have stuff that, Oh yeah, 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 that she's just cool with because it's like the personalities mix. We were watching. I was showing her these clips. Oh, I, I send that to you. That Philly guy, that dude doing oh, that's the, so funny calling into the, yeah, the, yeah. the radio station, and um, I'm playing it for her, and I'm just dying laughing. And uh, <laughs> total full Philly, just you know, just annoyed. The team is atrocious, John. I'm calling it. This team needs to be. All of them need to go. And it's like, dude, dude I've so been good. hearing that. I said, dude, I've been hearing that. That is driving around with my dad, listening to WIP in yeah. Philly, like As a my kid? whole childhood, yeah. just hearing people complaining about the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny that they have all that time yeah. to to do to call the radio station? Dude, they, all these guys that work and twelve hate, hour shifts and hate. It's amazing oh. the amount of like animosity towards their home team. <laughs> yeah, I, my brother texted me the other day and he's like, oh, "I'm thinking about going to a coaching clinic." He doesn't coach anything. He's not like a high school coach. <laughs> Like, why do you, like, this is working class stupid shit. But we would go spend money a on a coaching clinic. A coaching clinic. <laughs> like, why, why do you want to go? He's like, just want to know the game better. Like, I mean, all of our uncles are coaches. You play. Like, what more do we need to know about football? I said, hey, man. He goes, you want to come with us? I go, I laughed. I go, no. No, I'm not trying to do anything to better myself unless I know it's going to equal dollars. Like, I'm a 43-year-old man. I don't got time to do, ha hang out. Like, those player. grown men that go to, like, Mets super camp. Oh, I want to know about this coaching. So everybody sits. Are you think they're, like, sitting in a classroom? Oh, it's a whole thing, dude. And, they, like, everybody it's gets. It's with a NFL coaches. It's legit. Oh, it's with NFL coaches? Yeah, so it's like you would do it if you were. It would be a great thing if you were a high school coach. Like if you were at like looking to work oh. up the ranks, it'd be great to have on your resume. You would learn new stuff. And my brother, he's not, he's not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would love for him to full commit though, and he would wear his fucking bike, like the old '80s bike shorts that those coaches would wear with the button front. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the high top cleats. Like my dad used to wear cleats when he coached me in Pop One. Oh yeah, yeah. I told yeah, yeah. you about this. I remember right? guys. I remember the guy, the, um, the guys that coached my. Uh, what I, I played for a couple of years. They would always chew tobacco. Oh, yeah. It's always uh, tobacco. Because had... there's so much sitting around. There's yeah, just yeah. so much standing around. Uh -huh. Sunflower seeds, tobacco, like all that stuff. I just remember it being so easy to get and to, like, they was openly. Oh. Like, kids would. Oh, they'll give it to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to give and, it watch, to and watch you swallow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just all, just grown men just standing around watching kids vomit. Vomit from the juice. <laughs> Like 13, I remember playing some summer game and I was just coming into my freshman year. I was going to start my freshman year like a month later. So I couldn't have been more than 14. And they're like, hey, do you want some of this dip? 
And luckily, I'm like, I was a real pussy then. I'm like, nah, I'm good. But I could have easily been addicted to dip. Oh, dude. I at loved, 14. I love dip. Yeah, really? Because yeah. I, I played Cause, I played hockey. So in uh, Oh, locker, yeah, 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 locker, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. we would throw a dip in. And then when I started doing cocaine, you put a dip in. <laughs> and it's like just. Is that why people love that Zin shit? Was it Broussard is, talking about Zins, Zins when he was thing. on our show, yeah, yeah. right? Who was talking about Zins? Broussard. Wasn't he talking about Zins? Uh, Anyways, but that's uh, it's like yeah, the yeah, nicotine yeah. thing or yeah, something? Yeah, it's a nicotine. I mean, nicotine is a stimulant. Yeah. Oh, you know? I know yeah. that. So it's like just, yeah, like a straight blast. I remember I was in rehab and they told me there was a guy and, you know, I, I you ever like quote something and as you're quoting it, you're like, you picture the person who told it to you oh yeah <laughs> and I, you sl- I slowly you know what i'm gonna back off of this claim i'm about to make <laughs> that's what just happened with me right now the fucking dirtbag it was like dude uh, uh nicotine is more addictive than methamphetamines that's what the dude said and like more Whoa. uh but you get well it you is- say that you always say quitting smoking was your hardest right oh, o- oh, oh. over crack you talk about that all the time yeah i mean well because I would smoke 20 well, cigarettes, but I, 40 cigarettes a day. Nicotine is a more addicting substance. I would agree with that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's also socially acceptable. You know what I mean? If oh, I could do yeah, bumps, yeah, if yeah. I could buy a bag. Uh, yeah, people underestimate the part where you could buy it anywhere you can yeah, buy it. And you could just do it. You could just walk down the street and smoke for fucking five days straight. And right, care. yeah. Like if I, could, if I could be at work and go take a crack <laughs> break, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That right? might be more addic- That might be more harder to quit. <laughs> you know? I mean... Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. So this guy said that that's more uh, addictive. Anyway, uh, what was and I, who's this guy? He was just some dirtbag at a rehab. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's so funny when I think about stuff like that. You ever seen the movie Coco? No. Okay, so it's about Day of the Dead, like the Mexican holiday, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So this kid goes back and he's seeing all of his dead relatives. But the the thing is, is that once once you get to the other side as a dead person, the minute no one has memory of you anymore. Oh, yeah. There's a book. You about disappear. That. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's just funny how like if that guy's dead right now, I, I doubt anyone's talking about him. But every now and again, you I'm, bring up the I'm, shit. I'm keeping him. Keep, I'm keep keeping him, him around. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant. He was like an assistant counselor. He was the guy actually that drove us from the rehab to the uh, gas station. We would go to the gas station and buy. Get you would get like sodas and stuff. It was like the day. It was like you must have little... been so pumped for for the gas station oh, gas trip. gas station trip? Oh, it was oh, fucking man. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy the shit that you live for when you have nothing? Yeah. It's unreal. I always, yeah. like, jump. Sometimes I'll be bitching about something, and I'll remember, you know, like, what I thought was, oh, oh, oh man, oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm trying to figure, oh, oh, a $5 burrito, like, on a Tuesday, I could afford it, you know, when I first moved out of my, my dad's house. Because I moved out when he was all fucked up, so I had to, like, scrape a bunch of change together mm-hmm. that to me was like man today i get to buy and this. now you're sitting in a podcast with a bathrobe <laughs> like i mean come on i mean seriously <laughs> I mean, but, the, but your gas station trip was like freedom oh bro it was a freedom yeah 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 and then we would we would um we would somebody snuck out somebody figured out how to get out the windows <laughs> and uh would go just go up to the gas station and buy cigarettes i mean it's like dude what are you gonna do because we were in the middle of fucking nowhere it's like you're not gonna go Get tri- that was the first rehab I went to, like away camp. Uh, <laughs> I used to do that when I was uh, like ten. I would spend the night at my buddy's house. Uh-huh. He would fall asleep. I'd climb out his window. Oh wow! And then I would just go to the little shopping when center. You were ten? And I would go buy a condom and I'd bring it back and prove to him that I did it. So it was like a dare, but uh, I would do that because uh-huh. it was like. What would you do I, with a condom? Pff, nothing. I think one time I put it on, I dick couldn't fit my ten year old dick. Right, 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 right. But it was like I, I said he was like I was like, man, I'm gonna show this dude how brave I am, and I, would, I did it a number of times. In fact, one time I snuck out and walked all the way back to my house. Wow! And looked through the window like a weirdo, oh, that and came weird. all the way yeah, back. Yeah, that's, oh wow! Because I, I just wanted to see how it felt mm-hmm. to be in the. Because that was like the thing, the most dangerous thing you could do at ten is yeah. be out at night. Yeah, dude. And walking around in the street. In your pajamas, like some fucking nut job. Were you like hiding when cars would come by and yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. kind of like a game. Yeah. And my adrenaline pumps, yeah, probably yeah. now. That's why I'm crazy. Well, I used to play, uh, we used to play like fake guns. Like you would like. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, and then it was all kinds of like just hiding. And I'll never forget these two guys. Like I had, we all had like these just fake guns. We were probably like 10, 11. And um, 
<laughs> two guys. They were they wanted to play with some other guys, but the guns were in my house and they decided instead of just knocking on my door to like ask to get the guns to like do like a stealth op. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. They're in the back and they got the camo on. It's eleven oh, year old kids. And um and uh, and a guy. Where you get the camo paint? They had all kind. We all had all that shit. We were like oh, into it. Yeah, it was like okay. a summer. Like we were all like really into fucking like playing like army shit. Yeah. And um, you know, it's before like anybody got laid or hurt. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure. Before anybody like kissed. Oh, they know if you still get hard when you think about putting camo on. <laughs> <laughs> you pay your face to check off. The funniest thing, though, was the guy my my uh, mom was dating at the time was like, he's sitting there and he told, so, so like chilly goes, yeah, your friends are out back doing some kind of army shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's and how I like, feel about my whole life right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> And they're just like, and I look, and I, and like, it took me a second to like see him. They're all, all full camoed out. He's got like a little bush on his top of his head. I <laughs> put the bush. <laughs> And I go out back and I go, what the fuck are you guys doing? And they're like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> a bush on his head, that's the best. You know, what I was, for the show, I was thinking, man, you know what I don't hear about anymore now that I, I don't hang around with as many knuckleheads? is like guys in the neighborhood openly getting in a fight at the local bar. Oh, yeah. That used to happen all the time. All the time. I remember there was a guy that hit my grandfather in the face. And we all thought it was so fucking funny. Uh, so my grandfather would go drink at this, um, it was called Padre Gold. <laughs> and it all like the veteran guys would go there uh -huh. and they would give him, you know, it's like a VFW basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And my grandfather was friends with this, another Marine. At the time, I think they were both like in their 50s. Uh, his name was Samoa Joe or something like that. He's a Samoan guy. Mm -hmm. And then my grandfather, my friends for like years, they went to Korea together. Uh, like it was a university. They fought in Korea together. <laughs> they didn't go to Korea together. <laughs> they both shot these people in Korea together. Uh, but I, my grandfather, as he would get drunker, he would grab you. He he was notorious for like squeezing your neck and shit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he had like these really, he was a skinny Filipino guy, yeah. but he had these crazy strong. He'd grip you up. Yeah, he had yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. grip, this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. And he would grab you and, and he would grab harder and harder. And I guess this guy, my one of my uncles was with my grandfather drinking with him and told the story. He's like, yeah, he's kept telling your grandfather, like, dude, stop grabbing me. Yeah. And then he did it again. He goes, listen, you grab me one more time. And he told my uncle, he goes, hey, boy, if you're. Fada, you know, hit me, he grabbed me one more time. I'm gonna hit him like pigeon style, right? Like Hawaiian style. Yeah, he did it. He forgot, yeah, <laughs> yeah. grandfather forgot because he was so drunk. Yeah, and 20 minutes later, all you hear is bomb, and he hits all these stools, <laughs> just goes flying. Oh, flying. Yeah. I mean, this is a giant Samoan. Yeah, uh, and my grandfather, I think that probably my grandfather is really tough. I, I think he probably had been hit like that. And my grandpa would be oh. annoyed a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was probably been annoying people. guy getting hit in your fifties like that. Yeah. You've been hit a bunch. Well, he's that's also like the first time you got hit. <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. got kicked out of his house when he was like eight or nine, mm -hmm. and had to like live at a few places. He went to an orphanage and stuff, mm -hmm. and then he dropped out of high school at like fourteen and just played dice. And he he said he had a racket where, this is some real working class old shit, in Hawaii where he was obviously born and raised. They would go to the ships like leaving. And people would throw their lays. And back then, it wasn't as common to fly, especially in the, the 40s and 50s. Right. Um, so he would dive into the water, collect all the lays, and resell them on the dock. That's how he made money oh, to live. Oh, that's a and, good fucking hustle. And dice. He would play dice. He would find dice games. Right. Um, so he would like th he would earn the money and then try and double it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's his game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of those dudes that guy in Vegas was pretty notorious for for winning, but then blowing it when he would ha get drunk. He's an yeah. alcoholic. Yeah, 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 right. So he'd win a ton of money and right. then he would just it would be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a degenerate. Just yeah, fucking full degenerate just gambler. Just fifty yeah, yeah, beers yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, just, just fucking just done. It. Yeah, 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 just blow it. He would be up. He would be up like ten grand. Dude, I, that brings me to what something I wanted to talk about, dude. I, so uh, we're in a fantasy football league, and Josh and I are playing <laughs> each other this week. <laughs> Hey man, was I talking shit? Yeah, you were. Oh, baby. <laughs> Here's the thing about talking shit. I love talking it's shit. It's the best. Well, it's like a, it's the same rush as gambling. Oh, it is. It's the same rush because now I've talked so much shit. Now you're painted into a I corner. I need these guys to fucking win. 
I, did, I stayed up till one o'clock last night. Watching watching that fucking well, that delay game. game. The delay yeah, killed me. Delayed. I was like, I can't stay up for this. I was up all night, and like <laughs> fucking Dak is throwing interceptions. And I'm like, yeah, bitch. I'm fucking in the yeah. text thread to nobody. And then fucking does this fourth down. Twenty seconds left. Fucking wins the game. And I was like, wow. Oh yeah, we're close yeah. too. Oh, no, no, no. oh yeah, it's close. But I love talking shit. Like oh, yeah. that's to me is like it's so much it's fun. So, it's like that's the rush. Oh, I, it's yeah. the best. What's the point of playing a fucking? Well, but you're also kind of like my grandfather. When you were on the when you were high and drunk a lot, you would get punched a lot. Oh, I got punched all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've been punched all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get punched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a weekly occurrence. Oh, literally, dude. Oh, we should talk to some. Oh, dude, we should get my boy from fucking Penn State on. Oh, dude, yeah. He's a uh, he's a fucking riot, dude. Uh, George Funk. Um, but yeah, he'd be like, "Oh, dude, look at you. You got fucking punched again last night, didn't you?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I think. So. Yeah, I think so." <laughs> <laughs> you just go like what a shiner when you wake up in the yeah, morning. Yeah, you just wake up with a fucking black eye, a fucking. <laughs> You, you know, just a bloody fucking around the So nose. was it alcohol for you first, then into the hard stuff, or was it just weed into whatever, and then alcohol? Uh, as far as, like, your choice of dysfunction, I I, young. I always got just sloppy drunk. I was okay. always a sloppy drunk. So then that when cocaine, like, I found cocaine, that was like, oh, this will... Oh. This, this will balance me out this straight. Me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, of course, I you know, I couldn't just manage... You know, I couldn't do, co- you know, there's people, some people that can oh, do yeah, cocaine, yeah. like, yeah, just yeah. to be, you know. Yeah, willy-nilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a light, kind mm-hmm. of, like, touch to it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a light touch. No. No. I'm, I overdo everything. Yeah, I got a fucking heavy foot, bro. Like, I can't do, I, I've i been, like, uh, battling a little stuff lately. And that happens every now and again for me. It's just something I have to accept, right? And I do therapy and stuff. It's not that, it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be when you're, I'm managing, like, depression. But I have to be conscious of my myself because i will overdo anything that makes my brain like the endorphins go off in my brain uh, yeah, yeah. and lauren bought as like a pick me up she bought this bag like halloween bag of uh little chocolates like snickers oh, and right. milky way oh, dude, I, would, I, I, would, I i am i yeah in my depression i ate 60 of them in two days easy easy easy, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just wrap I, I would walk off the couch with just hands full of the empty wrappers yeah and I fought, and my teeth started to hurt. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> my teeth are hurting. I gotta stop. <laughs> it was depressing. Uh, and then you're more depressed. You're like, you I'm come, such a loser. You, you come home with like a fucking like one of those like dental uh, like those super fucking electronic brushes. Lauren's like, what's going on with that? You're oh, like, I have one of those. I have one. Of those. Oh, you already have it's one. It's like a hundred fifty dollar toothbrush. Oh wow, hundred fifty dollar toothbrush. Because I all Holy right, shit. it's I've been through three different kinds of toothbrushes. My teeth are super important to me because they used to be so fucked up. I spent so much money fixing them. Mm-hmm. And even though a lot of my teeth, because growing up, I I don't know about you, but my family never taught me how to floss. I never floss. Our br- I mean, and brushing my teeth was like, you should brush your teeth. It was never like regimented. You wake up, you brush your teeth. Like my son has like a routine with his teeth. I never had that. And I have mostly f- fillings in most of my teeth. Oh, Dude, my whole have, mouth is like a metal yeah, graveyard. I have so many fillings in my. I mean, I'm I'm going through a tooth thing right now, dude. Oh, you are. I'm in so much pain. I've been taking. It's like three weeks now with this fucking tooth. Damn, dude. Um, but I've had to stop taking. Uh, what's it? Ibuprofen or Aleve? Oh, it just thins your blood. I don't know. I, I just I was like I've been taking this for like three weeks straight. Like, why don't you go to the dentist? Oh, I went to the dentist. I'm in between. Oh, things. there's like you do a root canal. No, because that's a bitch, dude. It's worse. It's like he's trying to save the tooth instead of just doing the root canal. Hey, you, hey, dude, I'm cranky as fuck. And just talking about makes it. Makes you mad? Because I'm like in a small amount of pain. Yeah, at yeah, all yeah, times. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had to stop taking the pills. I'm like, uh, that's what's so, you know what's so crazy? Because I would eat Vicodin. Oh. I remember I got my wisdom teeth pulled out, and they gave me the hydrocodone. Did you ever take hydrocodone? Yeah. Oh, bro. I took that whole script. You know what? My stomach can't handle them. I puke. Oh, do you puke? Yeah, with like heavy Motrin, like dosage of Motrin. I don't like opioids. Not my thing. Is Motrin an opioid? If you, I When oh, I got my wisdom teeth... With- Motrin with like a DM yes. kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I got my wisdom teeth removed, I got all four removed, and uh-huh. they gave me some high in Motrin, and I, I couldn't Did handle you drink it. drink with them? No, no, I wasn't really a drinker then. Oh. Yeah. Because that's fun. 
Oh, get dude. A couple, get I a would couple love like, like a say Annie and, a, and like a <laughs> fucking scotch. I, I got addicted to um, Ambien. Oh, did you? I, well, I, I abused Ambien. So Ambien's like fucking dead. People die from that shit, I know. Right? That's why I stopped. Yeah. Because I was starting to drink with it. Oh. And I was doing weird shit. So I was like, here's what freaked me out. It's <laughs> so funny. Uh, I was living with two of my friends at the time here in New York City when I first moved here. And first thing that happened was I was I woke up in the morning and he's looking at me super weird in the living room. I was talking to my best friends. I'm like, what's your deal? He's like, hey, man, were you? I was in an acting class at HB Studios at the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, hey, were you like, going over lines at 3 a.m.? <laughs> Dude, I was screaming. To be or not to be. <laughs> and, and then you know how your brain will click? I remembered remember. yeah, yeah. scream. I had a robe <laughs> hanging over my closet door. <laughs> I remember screaming at it at three. Just, I was going through a bunch of shit with my family. I, I was screaming at this robe, and uh, I remember it was so embarrassing. Oh, wow. The, the last thing that did it for me was I had emailed an ex some wild shit, uh-huh. and I'm reading it, and it was all like these grammar errors. And at the time, you know, now people would go, oh, he, he wouldn't have written that. But back then I was dumb enough to where people probably would have thought, oh, he'd make those grammar yeah, 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 I was right. in my early 20s. Like, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, right, I'd yet right. to read a book cover to cover. Like, I definitely yeah. was not. <laughs> I was not in a place to be. Still my comic book face. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, in my see I, the movie first face. I was like magazines. <laughs> I was like a Maxim was, guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, Maxim, <laughs> FHM. Remember FHM? Oh, <laughs> shit. FHM, man. Ooh. So that's why I stopped. And then literally two months later, I think Ledger died from that shit. That's how oh, he died. Oh, that's right. He woke up with Homegirl and she fucking called her, her PR rep and bounced. <laughs> Remember that? Caitlin Olsen? Yeah, she just fucking called like everyone on her team first and then bounced. Yeah, that's fucked up. Um, yeah, there was, uh, I was, Pat Oswalt's wife died from uh, Ambien overdose. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah it's, like, it's, you just, uh, you your heart wait, stops or something like that, up. right? Yeah, 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 it's crazy. That's like the freakiest shit is to think like, you know, people, I want to die in my sleep. I'm always worried that I won't know I'm dead. I got. What? Yeah. What, you, what if you just live in a fucking purgatory of sleep? What if that? What, what if you you're what, a, you're dead? what, do you what if your soul? What do you mean if you don't know you're dead? What if you fall you think asleep? When you're dead, you know. Well, I like to know. But you think there's? What do you think? Well, you got like a, you talking about I like an afterlife t- uh, situation? No, you know that part where your body floats above you. Like if you, if I die in a hospital awake around my family, and my soul leaves. Like when my grandfather died, we were all talking to him in the living room. Right. What if I die in my sleep and I don't get to have the moment where my fucking soul comes up? And gets to talk to my family. If you're dead, your soul's going to leave. <laughs> oh, so I'll, the soul will be awake. See, for me, <laughs> oh, you think the soul will be asleep yeah, still? I don't want my soul to stay asleep. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> I don't want to die asleep. See, I get... I want to see it coming. See, I have a similar thing. It's a little different, though. I I, um, I don't believe in God or anything either, so... When, when they talk about the, crypt, uh, the cryo... Oh, yeah, freezing my brain. I might be into that. That I would not be into. Why not? Because what if you, my brain is just... I mean, what does the brain really need to live? Just electron... The Thoughts blood? are just electric uh, pulses, Uh huh. right? Okay. And if they've maintained my brain in a way... So you're scared that you'd be frozen, but your brain will keep you that awake? That I'm still thinking. That I'm just sitting there thinking. You're just beating yourself up over some yeah. fucking bit? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just going over a bad set. Please let that happen to you. <laughs> oh my! I will. I will be frozen with you, dude. Why did just I? <laughs> why did I shut that heckler down with this? What was I thinking? Some argument you and Gina had about fifty years earlier. <laughs> yeah. Why did have a letter convince me to work in the bedroom? <laughs> My neck still hurts and I'm frozen. <laughs> I knew we should have bought that dishwasher. <laughs> I told her about that backsplash. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Fucking that- crown molding. <laughs> <laughs> that crown molding. <laughs> you don't need to primer twice. I've been oh saying it. <laughs> I 
I'd rather be fro. I think I might want to be frozen. I used to want to be stuffed, but I think now frozen might be the way to go for me. No, nah, I don't want the frozen. I don't know what the. So the, you want to be burned, right? Just yeah, call it. You want to be call it burned. Viking yeah. funeral. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you want Viking funeral? I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. Ashes. I want. What the, would be on the ship though? Things you love. What would they be? Oh, crack. Uh, no, because uh, no. that's out of your life now. Uh, you know what's so funny? I'm My addictions be, don't define me. Yeah. I'm just an addict. I'm yeah. addicted to everything. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. nothing I'm, I'm partial to. No, 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 no. Uh, what would I, what would I have? I, you know, I got a, this hockey stick. Uh, I would like. <laughs> yeah. I got an old hockey <laughs> yeah. stick signed by the uh, the guys from Slapshot. Oh, sweet. Yeah, the twins. A, the the triplets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, triplets. That's yeah, right. Yeah, the, the Hanson. The Hanson. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I got that. That would I put that on there. Um, what do I got? I got my old Phillies T-shirt. I put that on there. Nice. Uh, the um, what else would I put on there? I got this Ween poster. I would, yeah, I would probably yeah, yeah. throw in there. Um, I got an old uh, dog toy. Oh yeah, yeah, keep, yeah, yeah. I would keep uh, uh, my first dog's dog toy, which yeah, I still have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. That's yeah. a great Viking funeral. Yeah, that would be cool. I wonder what I have on mine. Uh, what do you got? Like a. Uh, like a, a old VHS tape of you playing football. <laughs> yeah, my highlight reel. <laughs> <laughs> Both jerseys, high school and JUCO. The varsity letter that was stitched oh, on. Oh yeah, Tri Sport. Uh, my fucking Letterman jacket. I'd be wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that's interesting. Would you, I'd have. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be buried in. Uh, I would want it draped over like a like a like next to me. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to be buried in like a favorite <laughs> you, you, shirt. You don't want to be sporting it. No, 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 no. I don't know why. I like a. I like a regular, just like a regular. You want to be wearing that? When yeah. They, and I'll make over, sure you're wearing that. Well, you know what it is. I wanted to be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have every every woman that would agree to do it that I ever slept with. I'd want them to show up and push the boat out into the water too. Ugh. Topless. Ugh. Even if they're old. Really? Oh, I want to uh, see them all. Do you? Oh yeah! Oh man, I don't even want them to know. I think there might be some lookers in there still. Yeah, I don't. Depending wanna, upon my age, I wouldn't want to see any of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I but wanna, my back will be to them because I, mean, I want to like face the yeah, horizon. But I don't want them seeing each other either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't want. Oh, I want them to all no judge each other. Oh no, see, yeah, I yeah. think yeah, they'd be great for me to have one last goodbye. Oh, that's funny. All of us together again. That's funny. You would you would like just the chaos. The oh, the cattiness. chaos would be incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. huh? Just, just to, and I'd be gone. Yeah, I know. I'd have my hands stiff. I'd make them put them like this. That way, all, all they would see is the behind and the the, the deuce, the deuce as I get pushed <laughs> out. And you know, they light me on fire. You know what I would like? I would like um, one of these old guys that I used to I know down in South Philly. Like if somebody was droning on about like a, like if a eulogy was going on too. Oh long, yeah. Somebody, one of these old guys I, I used to know, I used to hang out at this old bar to come up and go, all right, let's wrap it up. Whoa, that, ah. hey, book a guy that you know is going to run the light yeah. and have that fucking guy. And then he comes up. Just wreck him. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Cut, shrink his dick. He's like, all right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, let's would... make a, a short list of what comedian that would be we would book for that. <laughs> I got a guy right at the top of my head who's always running the light <laughs> with terrible bits. I wish I could say your name. You're lucky you're a nice guy. I would love to say your name publicly of the 50,000 people that listen to this podcast. 500. 500. All right. Let's well, hey, let me ask you something. Yeah, though. hit me. Okay, when it comes to a Viking funeral, uh, I my grandfather used to always talk about dying. Mm -hmm. He would get drunk, and I'd be a kid watching TV with him, and he would always bring it up. And he oh, would, really? He would say the weirdest shit. He'd be like, because uh, Hawaiians are weird about death they're very woo woo oh they got a whole like spiritual like a whole, a big, yeah we like, are uh, not we yeah. are not a christian culture you know we're right. savages we don't subscribe to a whole lot of that other shit even though the christian people came over and gave her you know their religion to us overall we are very like one we have gods like we very much believe in pele the god of fire the god of earth like we have our own set of uh, shit okay. right and afterlife is At it like a re reincarnation type thing i or? don't know it's not reincarnation that might be more so uh, like native american so like a heaven thing it's something it's native always about american the island had, native american had, oh you become one with, with the, the island. island like you become yes. like a, it's all island it's yeah, all water yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all island mm-hmm 
Uh, and he used to, hey, boy, when I go Maki, Maki and Pigeon, like, you know, it's dead. Mm-hmm. When I go Maki, you, hey, bury me with my eyes open. Like, he was intent on making sure his eyes were taped open. Oh, wow. And he wanted to be bare, he wanted to be on display standing straight up wow. to look at people, <laughs> to look they, at people walking by. Did him. they do that? <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah, 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 they yeah, put yeah. him in a pine box, though. Yeah. And they, it's funny, kind of like you, he used to, he hated sleeves. Oh. So even he would have him. He had a members mean, only I jacket. Love, I love sleeves. No, no, no. I meant like the way he's going to be buried. He buried in his like shit clothes. Oh, uh, yeah, like yeah, his yeah. regular bullshit clothes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he wasn't really a driver because he was a drinker. So the only time he would get up off the couch is to go to the store down the street, he'd walk, uh-huh. and he'd put on his jeans. Only time he ever wore pants. Huh. And his shoes. Only time he ever wore actual shoes. He usually just wear slippers, like Hawaiian style, uh-huh. open toe shoes. Uh huh. Bathrobe. <laughs> no, he's not a bathrobe guy. He just dresses Hawaiian style. Okay. Like he wore nothing that didn't have like. Uh, I didn't know if this uh, was a tribute. You're you're hitting this little. No, this is just me. <laughs> being a tip shit. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a members only jacket. He cut the sleeves off of. Oh wow. Because he hated sleeves. That's funny. And that's dude. what he would wear when he. That was like his running errands outfit, and they buried him in it. Like death was just one more errand. See, that's yeah. I wouldn't want to be buried in a suit. No, I'd not, I would not want to be buried in a suit. No, like an old Metallica T-shirt, that would be kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 fitting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd. Uh, but the the Viking thing. I mean, you could do. Honestly, I would settle for. I told my brother this at one point. I'd. I would settle for the. Um, the Big Lebowski, uh, coffee can, and then just somebody just do the whole Vietnam speech that John John Goodman does. Right. So even in your death, you would just use somebody else's intellectual property. <laughs> I was like, if you want to, I was like, that would be cool, or you know, well, however you want to do it, that it would be funny. Like so many good men at Hill seventy nine, and <laughs> John Goodman so perfect. <laughs> so He's good. so good, so good. I've seen that movie probably five hundred. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. And Dom Herrera's part in it, where they let him do ah, one of his bits, it's ah, perfect. I got a rash so bad. <laughs> Forget about it. So good. Forget about it. I uh, watched. Um, we watched something yesterday that Rosemary's Baby. Oh, um, Roman Polanski. Pre- no, the pre. There's a prequel. Oh, yeah. It's kind of cool. Who's in that? You know who's in it? The girl from uh, uh, Ozarks, the uh, blonde girl. Oh, okay. This she would scream. Yeah. Right. That black. That blonde girl. Um, she's in it, and she's kind of like the Faye Dunaway kind of. Yeah, you know it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a prequel, so it yeah. happened before the that. But you know who's amazing in it? Uh, Diane Weiss plays the lady. You know the couple. I, I vaguely the know the movie. Couple, but yes, yeah. The old couple that were like yeah courting her to fucking yeah the Satan couple. The yeah, Satan yeah, yeah, couple. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Diane Weiss plays that little lady, and she oh. nails the. You got to see the trailer for it. Diane she's Weiss so good. Is one of the most underrated even though she's an academy award winner she is still underrated in my opinion opinion as an actress i had somebody on one of my old podcast who worked on a movie with her and said she is so awesome to be around her energy and she brings like little canaries with her on set oh canaries i guess they keep her company huh. and they like sit on her hand on her shoulder oh wow it's pretty wild but canaries won't just fly away i don't know these huh. ones didn't i don't know how, i don't know how she did it that's wild. Um, but yeah, it, it's funny because I had someone else tell me about another actress. I love Edie Falco and how she likes to color before she goes on. Ooh, I would I would totally get into that. Because, you know, and it makes sense because, you know, I do all these things. I talk about how pe- people get their minds ready to, to present. That's one of my businesses. And I always think about stuff like that where it's just an object of taking your mind to yeah. a freer place after you've already prepped yeah. to have that gap between the prep yeah. and then on stage. Because yeah. this woman worked in a Broadway play with her, and mm-hmm. that's what she said that she would do in the dressing room. It's just she would color. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do is to like not think about my set before I go up. If your brain could just be present, yeah. why would you? Yeah. It's like this really I'm famous good. quote. I'm good to go. Well, sometimes I've, I, I'm i like, oh, I'll do it before the show. And I, it's never as good as when I like prep yeah, like two hours before yeah. or whatever, before I drive, whatever. And I just get there and I could just be. 
Just be there. Clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah That's yeah, why yeah. I, I try to talk to people about that because my favorite Michael Jordan quote of all time, he doesn't say it, but it's, it's in the book Rare Air. Um, it's written by his best friend named Mark Vansity, I think his name is. Uh, mm-hmm. But he says it in The Last Dance, the, docu- the documentary. This guy, he goes, listen, I Michael Jordan is probably the greatest at his job than oh. anyone has ever been at his job. Oh. And he goes, That's and this good. is something that I recognize about him. He is the most present person I've ever met. And one time I asked him how he's so present, and he said, I'm not going to worry about a shot I haven't taken yet. Wow. And that is, to me, like the that's ultimate. So cool. I feel like that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's honestly, I think, the, the the culprit for a lot of the men in my life that I grew up with. A lot of these guys that had a lot of potential and a lot of intelligence, but did not have the skill set or the communication skills to go out and get a bigger piece of the pie that they wanted and a big part of their hang up especially like some of the my uncles and my my father especially they couldn't get over themselves they were never present they were always worried about what you know what someone wasn't giving them or what oh, right. this thing meant yeah, or yeah, they yeah. were always hung up in something they could not control they were always not present they were, they were never able to just be in the moment with their work there was always like the next bill's coming it yeah, always yeah, was like yeah, that yeah, shit, and yeah, it was yeah. so poisonous. I mean, I, they could have. E- There's a lot of people I know that could have easily been higher up on the food chain if they could have just figured it out. I get that way sometimes, where I'm, like I'm rushing, like something I don't want to do. Like I was, uh, I, I had like a busy day. I guess it was last week, and uh, I'm like, I just need to fucking the dog. It was pain in the. I got this whole thing going with the dog. Anyway, so I'm like running behind, and I'm like, I gotta eat. And I'm fucking rushing around. I dude, I dropped an entire like liter and a half bottle of olive oil. Oh, <laughs> oh and it's just shattered. Shattered. The cleanup on that alone's an hour, bro. Because it's olive oil. It's, there's dude, no way to clean it. There's no way to clean it, dude. I needed like those guys that come in to, to you know, <laughs> you know like, guys. To, like a Dexter, <laughs> like a fucking like some sort of fucking Mister <laughs> Wolf. Mister Wolf, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Because you need the mop. Oh, you need yeah, first is the absorb contain- it. First is the containment, man. Yes. Because it's oh, spreading. Oh, yeah. Fast. And it's just like it's like the blob. It's yeah. just going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like no floor is is level in yeah. New York City. <laughs> so it's just going into different corners. And it's running along the baseboard cabinet. So oh. I'm trying to like cut that off and then keep it from spilling out into the uh and the glass the, cleanup. There's glass oh, and then the dude. dog sniffing around. Oh, you know that's I mean? the so worst. So now I'm like, get the fuck out of it. Yeah. Oh, dude. That Night- would set me off. Nightmare situation. I was even I was for so- that mindset. That would that that used to put me over the edge where I would like punch walls. Back before I had my shit kind of maintained, uh-huh. that would take me to a place of like a. I would make the situation a million times worse. Oh, okay. somehow, some way, I would I would punch a wall. I would break break a finger on something because I would be so angry. It's the all of the men in my family are that. Well, so my point was, though, like, I'm like, I was rushing around trying to save like 30 seconds, a minute and a half and just call, to try yeah. to get. To, and I cost myself a day. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Day. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's funny because Lauren will be in here like, you know, working and I'll be doing the house clean. And if I don't time the house clean right, I have to rush it. It takes me like four hours to clean my apartment. That's how into it I get. Uh-huh. And something like that will happen. We're like a, some fucking detergent will fall because I'm rushing. Yeah. 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 And now I just created an additional 40 minutes to yeah. be clean. And I am like, God, yeah. I fucking can't. And I'm doing my, like, now I'm not as bad. But, man, she would be like, dude, I should just leave the house whenever you're doing this. Because this is crazy. Like, you're losing it over this. It's, in, I'm not being paid. There's I no time, like, deadline. I didn't lose it. I was good. I was just like, well, there's a couple things that aren't going to get done today. You know what I mean? I was <laughs> you just accepted like, it. This, I was just, I just got to go at this slow. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be controlled <laughs> on this. And uh, this is just what my day is. Clean it up. Fucking olive that's, oil. But see, that's the great gift is acceptance. If you can't find acceptance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's like, I know for a fact it plagued every man in my neighborhood. What not find an acceptance? Not being able to accept their reality. Oh yeah. Because if yeah. you cannot accept your reality, you can't change it. There's just no way. And I'm not trying to be woo woo about it, but that's uh-huh. just a the, that's just a situation. Uh-huh. And if you're mad that you're not making the money you need to be making, or you're mad that you're not getting the opportunities you want, like I just feel like a lot of men in my neighborhood were really, really thought someone was keeping them down. 
whether it be at the job, whether it be inside the house, yeah. whether it be socially, there was always an, at odds with something. Here's the thing with me, though. Like, I don't think people talked about stuff like that. Like, people didn't really, I don't really know who thought what because nobody talked about shit. See, I come from people that people say say everything they that, should, they, it's, it's, everything it's, they shouldn't say. Everything's and out everyone loud. Everyone was yeah, drinking. Yeah. There was no, I mean, I'm coming from a place where I'm, you know, five years old, literally house parties. Literal house parties filled with 20 year olds because my parents are young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, they no, couldn't I go anywhere. That. I yeah. had that too. So it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm sure. hearing people very drunk, uh -huh. very partied out, saying probably the worst shit you could ever hear people say because they feel very free to do so uh -huh, in addition uh -huh. to the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. drunkenness. Yeah, right. So no, we're talking zero inhibition mixed mm -hmm. in with extreme dysfunction. So I, I'm like hearing people really talk about who they think is holding them back. <laughs> Yeah, see, I don't know that I heard a lot of uh, complaining like that because it was um, like it was like, a, I don't know, I guess for my dad, you just don't, you don't talk about anything. <laughs> no, no, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah. It, you just keep it like, yeah, it's fine. Keep which it is, in. Which is the other end of yes. it. Yes. Which is like, you don't say anything about anything. Yeah. You just fucking drive yourself insane and everybody around you. See, I come from the opposite. Yeah, same, yeah, yeah. but the same result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> same yeah, kind yeah. of misery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. That's cra it's crazy. It's so funny. And you, and you think like, it's funny, when people are born rich, it, a lot of times it's like, well, they learn how to make money. So they figure out a way to stay and make you money because that's just who you're around. It's like us figuring out how to like find a guy to do my fucking transmission cheap like it's just what we do oh right we, yeah, you, yeah. it's like it's built into your yeah. environment yeah, yeah, yeah right. you just know a guy right like you know making money isn't that hard if you know 20 guys that make money and you could be referred to them oh yeah i guess that's, I, true. that's just the fucking reality of it mm -hmm, all like mm -hmm. that's just the way it is um i don't know i just feel like that really hit me hard thinking about that about how not being present is usually attached to a lot of failure. Oh, totally. Dude. In in my in the men in like in my world. I got something. <clears throat> this is a deviation from all this. I was wondering. Um, I was thinking about this the other day because I can't. How you talk to your wife? I'm just. This is a whole like uh, married segment here. Um, so I don't say the word cunt <laughs> to my wife, <laughs> right? Like I don't say that around my wife. But I say cunty all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Like should we both say, oh God, so, why are you being so cunty? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I never, like the abbreviation, it's, it's one of those words where like the shorter version is worse than the long version, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, do you have anything like that with, with you and your wife? I gotta, sp all right. I don't say cunt because I have a weird, like a dysfunctional story attached to it. Oh, interesting. So my dad, so you got like, like a trauma. Yeah, when my thing. kid, when I was a kid, my dad called my mom a cunt. Oh, and they got in a fist fight. Yeah. So I don't use cunt. You don't use cunt. I don't, but I also no longer subscribe to that being like the no-no word. Like, remember, for a long time, it was yeah, yeah. the n-word for women. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I wouldn't call a woman a, a cunt, but yeah, I know a lot of people use it very freely now. Uh huh. I feel like. You know, in another 10 years, I think cunt and bitch will be the same level cunt. of... Because uh, as we get more global, you uh -huh. realize other... Like, the English use oh. cunt all the time. Australians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah cunt totally, is like yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever. It doesn't yeah, mean yeah, anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now that we kind of feel that, like... I, that's one thing that this diverse... Diverse... What is a Divisive political structure in. It's really eliminated a lot of power for me for words. Like, a lot of words don't offend me anymore. And I think that's happening across the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's there's a thing. <clears throat> I mean, this ties into the uh, Latinx yeah. thing, which is, like, that's something, like, white people decided. It's not. Well, like, everything so far has been what white people have decided. Right. The, the, the people they're trying to defend. Yeah. Don't really have an issue with a whole lot of the shit. Yeah, right. That white people are claiming to have an issue with. Right, right exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is like the same thing with like, I think cunt. Yeah. I, I would like. You think a bunch of white women are saying, <laughs> this is a bad word. <laughs> I'm just trying to get cunty into the fucking lexicon. I would like. To, what is it about cunty that you find oh, to be great? It's so specific. But it's I also so, feel like that's an bitchy. East Coast thing. It's better than bitchy. It's a tri-state area thing. It's better than bitchy. Bitchy is like, you're tired and uh, you're just, I'm just a little bitchy. Cunty. 
Oh, has just some. It, it there's, it's personal now. There's some bitter. It's there's personal. Some, there's some bitter. Like it. It was. There's more to it. Yeah. There's something else behind it, right? If you're being cunty about it. Hey, you don't have to be so fucking cunty. I right? agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a different level of emphasis. Yeah, yeah. Right? So don't be cunty and make sure you follow me at <laughs> Josh Ricardo. <laughs> Go to joshricardo.com. We have uh, Working Class Wolves Comedy Tours coming to Tapped Apple November 2nd. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, so make sure you go buy those tickets immediately because they will they are selling. Yeah, yeah Oddly yeah, enough, I'm not even lying about that. That's going to be a hot one. They're selling. Yeah, yeah. And then we got some Connecticut stuff coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. Too, lots right? of stuff coming yeah, up yeah, yeah, cool. to end the year. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Comedy. Go to edmcgowan.com to see my city dates. Email us. If you feel like cunty should be a word that is in the lexicon, come on. Let's go. Let's get it going. You work at Webster's? <laughs> Do you know anybody in Oxford? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's make it happen. Uh, email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. Later. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.